where where you're at right now with this cancer research um when will this be applied in real world scenarios it already is it is it already is i mean you know, I mean, look at who just won the Nobel Prize last year, David Baker at Google, with the you know ability to predict protein structure, et cetera, and protein structure. Once you know the protein structure, now you can predict molecules that might f come into it. So go back to the stuff that I'm trying to do with looking at the complexities of the dance of how the immune system talks or doesn't to cancer. You know, if we can find a particular place that might be an Achilles heel along the way towards the shutting down that is different, for instance, than um, what the current drugs are. Well, maybe we should aim at that. There's, there's so many more opportunities that are suddenly opening up in front of us because the AI and the data is letting us look at a network of how the system is working. I mean, before it used to be you'd look at a computer chip and you'd see just a computer chip with a few wires. But Imagine now that you, as a scientist, have a microscope that's looking at the complexities of the wiring diagram that's connecting this resistor to that capacitor to that diode to this transistor. That's where we are now. Mm. And so now suddenly we can say, well, I don't want to do that because it'll kill the chip, but the chip is malfunctioning, so let me put here or put a little bit of pressure there, and now I can reactivate the immune system or the chip to work in the right way. Again. So, so when you're talking about things like with your particular issue with melanoma, when you're talking about CRISPR potentially developing some sort of a, a topical solution that you could put on that mm -hmm. would fix whatever issue that you have, is this something that this AI that you've developed or this overlay of the AI would, would actually assist CRISPR in figuring yes. out how to create something yes. like this. Yeah, because maybe it's not one place I need to press, but two or three at the same time. Right. And so when you're talking about a complex feedback network, I mean, so, you know, we're in Texas, so people do oil refinery. You know, maybe you need to turn this valve here a little bit and that valve there and that one there to mm. make everything work just right because something's wrong over there. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what we're – this is where AI has the, let's say, the omniscient view that no human can. Uh, and that's what excites me about it is because I'm limited in how much I can keep in my mind at any one time or no. Right. But with the right question, the prompt – the prompt engineering, and then with the right backbone structure behind the scenes that Agentic AI is now uh, um, you know, providing, now I have the ability to ask the questions and get answers in near real time. And so I, you know, I wish I was 30 years old again mm. because I would move into this area so fast and be – there's – I mean, I can already see with the work that we're doing dozens of potential new target opportunities that last year didn't exist at all. Well, I got good news for you. With AI and with CRISPR, you might be 30 again. Maybe. Oh, I would love it. I would love it. I, I think would, that's on I the, would love it. I think that's on the menu in about two or three decades. Mm -hmm. I, th I, I hope Given earlier. We survive. I, I'm just being... Yeah, no. Realistic. Realistic. I don't even know if I'm being realistic. D don't give false hope. Well, well yeah, but don't give false hope. But I mean, with the exponential discoveries, the exponential increase in the technological evolution just that we've seen in our lifetime. And then I think AI is some new thing that is going to throw all that into the just a giant monkey wrench into the gears of our understanding right. of how quickly technology evolves. Well, look at Neuralink as, a, as an example and Elon Musk's stuff. And, you know, the woman now who can think her thoughts and make stuff happen mm -hmm. um, because she's otherwise paralyzed, right? right? I think it was Neuralink that uh, just showed some of these results. So fast forward, I mean, we're already in an exponential increase in what it is that we're going to be able to accomplish, and AI will help us accomplish some of these things faster. I can see a time where, you know, I could maybe apply something. I don't necessarily want a surgical implant, but maybe some sort of net over my head that allows me to think through these problems. And I... The AI becomes a, an adjunct to my thought processes, not only what it is that I think, but maybe even provides information back to me, back into my system mm. directly without having to go through the ears so that I can much more quickly 
come to conclusions. Now, there's all kinds of apocalyptic scenarios you can imagine with of that course. as well. But I'm an optimist at heart, uh, perhaps, again, naively so. Me too. But <laughs> I prefer that kind of an outcome because if, you, if you're not an optimist, then there'll be no progress because all you'll do is worry about disaster. Yes, that's a good point. But also, realistically, we might be giving birth to a new life form. Yes. And I think we are. A, a superior one. 